Welcome back folks. So we're going to build a kit today and the kit is this little power supply. It's an adjustable power supply based on the LM317 and it comes with all the parts including a little voltage display but uh, I made a, a, a silly mistake. If you guys ever order one of these uh, please note that um, there's a 120 10 volt and 220 volt version I live in Canada and I went ahead and got the 220 volt version, but that's okay. I have a transformer here so I can get 220 volts. So I can still test it out and use it. And there's a number of things that I'm going to do that's a little bit different than what they say in here now. Here it comes with, it comes with this little sheet. So it's got a complete English description of how the circuit works and you know troubleshooting and how to use it. And it's got this uh, pictorial page here for assembly and I've got some the instructions are both in Chinese and English and the English is actually pretty good so these guys actually <laughs> found somebody who could understand English to do the translation for them which is nice yeah a couple of things I'm going to do like I said uh, first of all I'm going to I'm going to put a power switch in it because it doesn't come with a power switch I think that would be handy to have and uh, I'm not going to use the, the little terminal strips. So they have these little terminal blocks here. And you can see them here in the picture uh, for the output and for the various other functions of it. I'm going to not use those. I'm going to instead, I'm going to put in binding posts for the output. And for the other functions, I'm going to include these uh, banana sockets. So I think that it's just going to make it a whole lot more usable that way. And one final thing I'm going to do, this little meter that they have here for it. What you do is you have to add on some little bits of um, cut off wires from components and bend them down and then it goes into the board. But other than that, there's nothing, nothing holding it in place. It's just flapping in the breeze, as Dave Jones would say. So I'm just going to use a little piece of sponge tape. I'll cut it to fit that and it can stick it down there so it doesn't move around if the thing gets bumped. So I'm going to get started on putting this together. Now I'm, not, I'm going to skip the usual um, speed it up montage that I do when I build kits because I think there's enough for me to show you as I go through it with the different stages of doing the modifications and actually just building the thing that I'm going to skip that entirely. So I'll just, what I'll start doing is I'll start putting the PCB together. Once I have that together, I'll show you what that looks like when it's finished and if there's anything of, of interest. I'll let you know about that. And oh yeah, let me mention one other thing. Like it does have other functions. So it, ha it, is a, uh, it does have an adjustable power supply. I think it's between 1.2 volts and 12 volts or something like that. And uh, it has these other functions here. So it's got a logic probe. So and, and here are the, the LEDs for it. So if you use the logic probe, which should go between ground and uh, the logic probe input here, it'll tell you whether the pin that you're looking at is either high or low. And it, all that function is provided by this uh, hex inverter here. It's the CMOS hex inverter. And so three of those uh, inverters are used in making the logic probe. And then the other three are used in making a little oscillator. And the oscillator is the signal tracer. So you have a signal output and then you have a signal coming back in. So you can use it as a continuity tester. It has a little speaker built into it. So we'll check out that functionality when we're all done as well. A pretty interesting little board so it's, it's going to make a handy addition to our beginners toolkit you know, the second power supply the logic probe functionality and then the continuity checker i'm going to start building this and i'll i'll come right back and show you what that looks like when it's done okay so we've got the pc board put together and a couple of things i will note here is that um this little display this little meter here doesn't quite fit in the location once you put the pins on it, it kind of shifts it over a little bit to get those pins in. Yeah, so what I did is had little mounting tanks sticking out the sides there. I just cut those off so it didn't interfere with these diodes there. And like I said, I put in a, a little bit of um, double-sided sponge tape there to hold it down. And then for the LM317 there and its heat sink, um, they didn't supply any thermal compound, though I, I put a little dab on there. Now what you need to do when you solder this assembly in, you know, is assemble the LM317 onto the heat sink first. That way you get the spacing down there correct. And leave the screw loose. That way you can align everything up. Then first solder down the heat sink. 
and solder down the LM317 and then tighten up the screw. Okay, so the next stage now will be to figure out where I'm going to put all these things here. So I'm going to mount up the transformer in here and I'll temporarily put in the PCB so I can see where everything goes with respect to everything else. Let's do that. Let's mount it up there in place. Now it looks like we'll have uh, plenty of room for the switch over here. So I'll put the, the mark for the switch right in the middle of that space there. Yeah, that'll be fine. That'll be good. All right, let me get those holes all marked up and drilled and uh, come back and I'll show you what that all looks like. Okay, we've got everything uh, mounted up here and everything clears everything so we don't have any stuff coming into contact inside the case switch so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put the logic analyzer on these two and these two here will be the continuity tester all right so the next stage here is to uh wire all these up get the wires down, wire them to this, and then also get the switch off. Now, wire it to the power, and then do a final assembly. All right, we've got all the wiring is done up here. Now, all that remains to be done is the final assembly. I got one screw in there in the circuit board. And I've got the switch hooked up, so we're going to have to try and fold things over, get everything <laughs> where it's supposed to go, and get that switch inserted in that hole over there, all in one go. And it's likely to be a lot of profanity, so what I'm going to do that off camera, and uh, we'll come right back and I'll show you the finished product. Then we'll put it through some tests. Okay, so we've done the final assembly. It wasn't too bad, actually and uh, it looks quite nice. I'll just turn it all the way down. I've got it uh, hooked up so that when you turn it this way it'll go on. And uh, yeah, so the, between these two here is the logic probe and between these two here is the signal tracer or continuity tester. A couple of things I will mention is this plastic here is kind of brittle. When you drill these holes you have to do it fairly slowly with a with a fairly slow drill bit speed as well, but don't put too much pressure on. Take a few seconds to drill each hole, and that way you won't crack the plastic. And other than that, I can't think of anything truly strange. I mean, the, the circuit board is pretty good quality. The parts are you know what you'd expect for something that costs uh, under twenty dollars. I've got it plugged into my two hundred twenty volt transformer, so. Let's uh, hit the switch. This is all the way down. Let's hit the switch and see what happens. Okay. Well, no smoke. It's putting out 1.26 volts. As the power light didn't come on. It's weird. Oh, okay. Some of the, some of the circuits must be run off the uh, the output side of the regulator rather than the input side. That's odd. So the logic song logic high. I don't know what that blinking light means. And it looks like we get a maximum of 13.6, 13.7 volts. Anyway, let's, uh, let's hook it up to the meter here. The meter's all ready to go. And we'll see. Measure these voltages coming out. So 1.28, that's 1. Point, that's almost 1.29. Let's say 1.26. So what's it like at around 5 volts? Uh, it's a little bit better, saying 5.14 here, 5.09. So let's go up 10 volts. That's not too bad. And all the way up to. 13.7. Let's see what uh, any AC ripple at that point. 
It can't make up its mind if there is. We'll put that on a scope and have a look at that in a minute. Now I've got this fan here. So let's, let's get this off here. I've got this fan here. This fan consumes about 200 milliamps, which is all this thing is rated for. And you could, that transformer wouldn't deliver any more than that anyway. But we'll see if it'll even deliver that. So we'll see if we get this fan up and spinning with it. And let's turn off the power, plug it in. Turn on the power where it's set right now. Okay, so the fan is starting to go at four volts and we will crank her up. Yeah, so I see it won't even go past eight volts here with this fan on it. So let's see where it's living current here. Okay, so we need to hook this up here, this up here. And uh, 1.27 volts, we've got 32 or 0 0.032 milliamps. So five volts are up to 110 milliamps, six volts, 96 milliamps, going down a little bit. And yeah, let's bring this up to what we got the maximum. So it's, yeah, so I'm only going to give you about 140 milliamps. Can't feel the heat sink, but. Probably getting a bit warm. That's it. Current limits at 140 milliamps. Well, that'll do for a lot of things. Let's try some of the other functions now. So that red LED is saying that it's it's high, and that normally would happen. So shorting this out to ground, we should put it low. And uh, that <laughs> green LED is very, very dim. It lights, but it's extremely dim. You have to turn up the voltage a little bit. And then you can see it there, but it gets kind of washed out. The other lights are kind of blinding. Okay, now let's also try that uh, continuity tester thing here. Ooh. What does this do? It's supposed to adjust this. That's annoying, but uh, you know, it'll tell you if you got a continuity. Okay, handy little device. Give me a second here. I'm going to bring up a, an oscilloscope and we'll We'll put the fan back on it and see if we can't have a look at the noise coming out of it on the scope. One second while I set up for that. All right, we've got a scope on. And let's uh, start raising the voltage on here and see what happens. We've got AC coupling. So when we start current limiting, we're getting a little bit a ripple there. It's about uh, oh, 500 millivolts of ripple. Let's, let's see when that disappears. All oh, right, there. It's just as soon as it stops current limiting. Other than that, it's a nice quiet supply. I imagine those little spikes there, they're coming from the fan itself. Yeah, we'll ignore those. Yeah, well, not a bad little power supply, I'd say. And considering that it's got a, a little logic pro built into it and a continuity test or two, it's a handy little tool to have in your kit for operational amplifier circuits, some logic circuits, anything up to 140 milliamps thereabouts. It's pretty good. The kit wasn't that hard to build, including all the modifications here. It took me about, I guess about an hour to do everything. Thumbs up for the price, it's, it's awesome. And uh, you know, consider if you get one of these, consider doing these modifications. That uh, makes it altogether a more useful tool rather than have to fiddle around and connecting up little wires here and there to do things. 
just plug them in with normal everyday ordinary banana plug wires if you don't have a bunch of these in your lab get them they're great they're absolutely essential all right thanks folks thanks for joining me and uh, we'll see you in the next one bye bye